What do you get when you mix a health coach and a wellness coach mixed with a lot of curiosity? You get two people who ask a lot of questions about health and wellness. Today we ask, are you in a funk and how do we get out of it? Sometimes we get stuck and for whatever reason, we just don't want to do anything, especially take care of ourselves. What can we do when we don't feel like doing anything? Let's get started as we ask. Wait, what? Hi, Leah. Hi, Kamna. How this topic you? is so appropriate for me today. I cannot even tell are you. Are you in a funk? I'm in a funk. I'm going to explain it in a minute, but I'm just in a funk. How, okay, wait, but how long have you been in it? Um, Probably about two weeks. Oh, okay. All right. So, I've, how, I've you, how are you? Let's talk about it. I have, I was in a funk and I don't think I realized I was in a funk mm -hmm. until I'm out of it now. So I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, what just occurred to me is remember we did that episode on you lost your care. It's kind of connected it's to that. Just like that that yeah. just occurred to me. I, but here's the interesting thing. I didn't really think I knew I was in a funk this whole time. Yep. I really yep. didn't. Now, before I remember thinking like, I don't even give a crap anymore. I just don't care. Mm -hmm. But this time I thought I was doing, I thought Better. I was fine. Yeah. Sneaks up on you. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. It's just really. And awesome. these, these days getting shorter does not help. Oh, I, I can't even at all. how much I hate this time. Yeah. I was just telling you, I feel like it's the middle of the night right now and mm -hmm. it's not it's ready i'm ready for bed but whatever yeah I'm always ready for bed <laughs> um so i really quick think i should give an update on my food strike that i went on oh yes please <laughs> okay good i was wondering if you were going to remember but i remember um, i nobody well everybody noticed that i was like whatever you want for dinner make it yourself whatever kind of thing and it was very um hard on me it was harder on me I believe than that. anybody else than anybody yes. else and I think it was more annoying on me because everybody kept saying what's for dinner and I'm like no I'm not making dinner whatever you guys want whatever you want whatever you want so I honestly I realized that while I didn't really get what I wanted out of it actually that's not sure I did but anyway I didn't really get a lot of what I wanted out of it it made my life easier to have a plan yeah and Plus your like mom guilt probably kicked in. Yeah, hard. they kicked in a little bit. And actually it did actually do a lot of what I wanted because then Saturday and Sunday when I was like, I'm making a grocery list. What do you guys want? They were all like, oh, I need this and this and this and this. So they were all giving. Oh, that's me. good. Yeah. Because I that's was like, good. or else it's going to be a free for all again. And I don't think any of them liked that. Nice. And then I did had no problem. Nobody gave me problems about what when I said, "What do you guys want for dinner this week?" Everybody was throwing ideas at me. So I think really, all that I didn't get the praise that I wanted. I think they uh -huh. all appreciated it in a different way. Yeah, and that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. That's I still so hate good. it, but I, I'm, I'm back to my food plan and my menu and all of that. That's anyway. great. And real quick, my um. What was my call to action? Well, I'm working on my trifecta mm -hmm. and it's also um, social media in bed and I'm doing great with it. Really? Yeah, I'm doing really good. Did you have any withdrawal or anything? Um, No, I have a couple of moments when I check the weather or I'm like, well, what should I do? I don't feel like getting up yet kind of thing, mm -hmm. but I don't go on social media. I think good I have accidentally you. done it. And then as soon as it opens up, I'm like, oh, and then I turn it off. Wow. Good for you. Do you feel any different? Um, no, but I don't miss it. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know if I, I, I don't think I did it to feel different. I think I did it because it was like, I was sucking. I was just laying in bed for an extra 15, 20 minutes. Right. That wasn't needed. You yeah. know what I mean? I wasn't like in a negative headspace about it or anything bad about it. It was just like, I, it was sucking my time. Yeah. So Anyway, that's my update. And what about your updates? That sounds really successful, though. I think that's good. Um, I was supposed to cut up vegetables and have them ready in the fridge. And because I am in a funk, I didn't have the energy for it. I did not have the motivation. 
I've hardly cooked this week. I've cooked like three times and one time with spaghetti, which doesn't count for me as cooking. Really? No, it's just, you know, anyway, jars open, yeah. water's boiled. It's not cooking. I have like, I didn't do the whole thinking about the protein and the fat and the, like, it didn't do my normal stuff. Is mm -hmm. there a vegetable? I'm what just, a perfect timing for this topic then. I, I could not have asked for a better time for this to, topic to come up, but well, probably maybe sub subliminal messaging. Like I, yeah. I suggested it to you because I'm in a funk. Um, my motivation is just less and I just don't want to do anything, but I realized one thing you're going to laugh. Um, so when my kids were little, the, I think I've told you this before, the thing they would do when I was annoyed or upset is they would go clean as a oh, way I... to make me happy. Okay. If I was like mad at them or upset or they didn't do something or they didn't do their homework or whatever, they would just go clean if they knew that I was getting annoyed or irritated. And it was their surefire way for me to be happy again. So that's what I did this so weekend. Okay. You cleaned. I cleaned. It's intense cleaning. Like I cleaned the basement, the storage room. It's, we went and we dumped a whole van full of stuff for donation. We have probably a whole van full of stuff for garbage. We have another van full of stuff for recycling. Oh my gosh, you really went crazy. Yeah. But the benefit of this was, even though I didn't do my CTA, for those three, four hours, I was not on my phone. I had music playing. I was focused on my task. Did you do it by yourself? Uh, my husband did help me. Oh, okay. Which yep. sometimes can be worse. Uh, it, it was entertaining, let's just say. Okay. But it got done and uh, it's very clean, which makes me happy. So I did not... Um, I didn't realize that I was doing this as a way to get myself out of the funk until I started researching this topic. Oh, so do you think you're out of the funk because of that? I'm not out completely, but I'm working on it. Okay. But the vegetables just didn't cut up. That that cut up because it, it just seemed like such a monumental task. I just couldn't do it. Mm. I agree with you, which is why so many of our call to action members like just buy veggie trays for themselves. Yes. That makes sense. It's, I I can't tell you how many times I've had food go bad in my refrigerator because yeah. I don't feel like cutting up broccoli or whatever it may be. I just don't feel like doing it. Well, and the sad thing is it takes, what, five minutes? I know, but it's like a cutting board and a knife and wet hands and blah. It's a lot. It is a lot. I'm sorry. It it's, is. It is. I just did. I don't know why I picked that CTA. I thought it would be easy and I could just do it. It just felt so enormous to me i just mm -hmm. didn't do it okay did you buy the stuff or not even do that not really i bought celery which was partially cut up already <laughs> so i think that's part of it too is like we have all these great ambitions and we don't even plan when we're gonna buy it that was also part of the problem even the planning of what vegetables we're gonna actually eat and what vegetables am i gonna throw away i don't yeah. want to do that anymore I've I, thrown away so much stuff. It makes, it breaks my heart. I know. So I'm like, I'm just not buying it because we're not eating it. I know. It's hard. It It's hard to balance it all. Yeah. So this is perfect. So you'll tell us how you got your, you're getting out of the funk. Yes. Okay. We're good yes. on that. So, oh, but before that, you want to know what I'm loving? Absolutely. Okay. So simple. So simple. I am loving air popped popcorn okay Loving tell me it. more okay so i just take kernels like the kernels that you buy in the jar right any, to any kind any kind at all and you put them in a brown paper bag and you hit the popcorn button oh that's it you you don't even need olive oil everybody has always told me you need olive oil you don't you don't need any olive oil in the bag at all Oh, wow. Tastes delicious. Honestly, you guys, it's been our, you guys, I don't know, judge me if you want, but I've always been a microwavable popcorn mom. Mm -hmm. like that's been our snack. And just recently we've been trying very hard to move away from it. Right. I still have it for the times when I don't, you know, quick and easy grab and go kind of thing. Sure. But we've been making microwavable popcorn. So when I'm talking about kernels, I mean, literally like, is it Orville Redenbacher? Sure. That kind, or I think I bought a fancier kind this time. 
and I just pour some in a in the brown paper bag, fold it over, put it in the my microwave, hit the popcorn button, and I'm done. So do you add anything on the top of it? Yeah. So when it comes out, we actually do melt real butter. Mm -hmm. Like we have, I, I think, I think I buy the all these brand butter and we put some of that on it with salt. Or sometimes I will put cinnamon and sugar on it to make it mm. not a lot of sugar, but mostly cinnamon, just a little bit to give it some sweetness. And it's so good. But here's what I wanted to tell you that I made it the other day, last week or the whatever it was for my daughter. And she had two of her friends over and they were like, this is the best popcorn. Where, where did your oh. mom get this from? And my daughter was like, I don't, my mom makes it. And they're like, well, what do you mean she makes it? And my hair, I heard her and she's like, no, she just puts kernels in a bag and puts it in the microwave. They're like, this is so much better than popcorn. Yes, I totally agree. And it's really not that hard, I think is my point. Like, it's really mm -hmm. not that hard. Also, because I'm not putting olive oil in the bag, I reuse the bag. Yes. So I have one of those bowls. I bought it from Weight Watchers. It's like, I think a silicone. I have that bowl actually. And I use that. And now somebody's like, where did you get it? And I told them, but they said, oh, they found it on Amazon. So they've ordered this silicone bowl. Mm -hmm. like, same thing. You don't need anything except the kernels in there. You just pop it and then add whatever you want. Yep. And I used to use the bowl and I don't even use the bowl anymore. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, that was another thing that I had in my cupboard that I didn't even need. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. So I I think it's in my goodwill pile to donate because oh. I don't even need it. I just throw it in a baggie or not oh, a baggie, nice. but you know what I mean? Yeah, a paper anyway, bag. Anyway, that's what we're loving. My whole family's loving it. It's a, I feel like it's a good, healthy snack that's to eat. That's a great tip. Way better than um, Doritos or microwavable popcorn. Now, again, I still have it, microwavable popcorn, but we're trying really hard to not. And I really um, put ghee on it. It's so good. I was just going to say, it is mm -hmm. so good. I, I love you. it. I, there's something about it. It's just so decadent with it. Not a lot of key on there. Mm, I need to get that. I need to make some of that again. Maybe I'll yeah. do that over Thanksgiving. I love this tip. And I love it for a couple of reasons. One is simple. And it's uh, fiber. It's fiber. It's mm -hmm. a really good snack. But also the change from a, one of those microwave bags of popcorn to popping your own is so much better for your health. Mm -hmm. I just love it. I just love it so much. It's so good. And it I looks, do. It's just a pretty, it's actually when it pops, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so clean. Compared so to like, do you have a measurement for a paper bag? I will have to get it back to you so that you can put it in the show notes. I do have a container that I measure in. Okay. I think it's a fourth of a cup. Does I do two a... handfuls. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh... Okay. So... I don't know what it is. It's, I have okay. a little, a certain thing that I do. Okay. I'll have to get back to you and measure it for you, but it's so easy and it's cheap. Yeah. I don't think the it's whole so much better for you was too. like five bucks. I don't even think it was $5. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need any oil. I just want to remind everybody because everybody was always like, oh, you have to put a little bit of olive oil in the brown paper bag. No, you don't. That you mm -hmm. do, absolutely do not. So no, I think that actually 10, I don't know. I haven't done it really in a long time. I, it tends to I burn did some pieces. I did, and it didn't taste any different whatsoever. Mm. So not even Very good. But that's what we're loving. The whole I do want to ask you about something you said you wanted to share, if you're okay with it. Okay. Uh, about something you made. Okay. For your cleaning stuff. Oh, I don't have the recipe in front of me. I made. Oh my god, you're gonna think I'm nuts. I made I'm, laundry detergent. I made homemade dryer sheets. Oh, you made the dryer sheets? I made them. And I made dishwashing detergent. All three. Wow. And I love them all. I bought some of the things you had mentioned so I could make my own because I'm so fascinated with doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me just back up and say that I think I didn't realize how bad dish detergent was for you and I mean if you think about it nobody is eating those dish pods right but they're on your dishes right right so I was researching dish pods and I really was like oh my god I never thought of that like everything to wash my dishes was a chemical mm -hmm. so that really led me down that rabbit hole so all it is is washing soap salt and um 
baking soda and mm -hmm. lemon juice. It's four things. It's so easy. So easy. Wonderful. That's um, amazing. I have some for you. So don't, well, you can make it too, but, but whatever. I'm um, just so excited to try it. The dryer sheets are different. They're okay. Different. Okay. So the dryer sheets is bizarre. It's vinegar and water and whatever essential oils you like in it, like 15 drops. And then you take like a, an old towel and I cut it up into like square sizes and uh -huh. you just dip it in, squeeze it and you throw it in. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding? No. And you does I, cause I was like, this is going to smell like vinegar. Not even a little bit. Doesn't smell like vinegar at all. And it like gets for the most part, I don't even notice much static. Do you get all the, like your clothes smell nice? They don't smell like vinegar. And they don't smell, they smell a tiny bit. I, I think I might put more drops of my essential oil in the next time okay. because I don't think I put enough in, um, but it's perfectly fine. I'm blown away by that. And then I just literally, when I pull the clothes out of the dryer, I take the little pieces of fabric and put them right back in the jar that's on my thing. That's it. Oh it it's so easy. This is so simple. Why are we not doing this? So easy. So easy. And so much better for you. Yeah. But I do, oh I should post all of the ingredients um, if you guys want to make them. Or you know what? Just let me know. I'll make it for you. <laughs> I mean, it's so, by the way, when I did the math on the, the dishwasher pods, it came to like two cents a pod. It's already, it's a benefit. Yeah. But also side note, I'm going to try it and not make them into pod shapes and just like scoop and just do it like dry. Do you know what I mean? Because I like yeah. form them into little round discs. And I don't think I'm going to do that next time. I'm just going to. It's a lot of work. It it wasn't as bad as you would think. It was actually mm -hmm. kind of like satisfying because I felt like I was making all these little tiny sandcastles. Oh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's it. That's my story. So yeah. Did well, you for any chance that. get any dish soap or anything? I haven't done anything. I was, I got the kosher salt and then I have baking soda and have. I'm a juice. I just need to get the washing soda. Yes. And I need to get the exact measurements from you. Yes. But I'm trying it. I'm going to tell my husband, please don't buy any more pods. Yeah. It's you. It's not needed. It's really not. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I always cool. buy my vinegar in a gallon jug anyway, mm -hmm. because I clean Same. my pores with it. Yep. So this has been nothing. Nothing yeah. to do. I'm so excited. The, the dryer sheets. Anyway, by the way, I have the wool balls before anybody messages me and says, just use wool <laughs> balls. Those don't work worth the crap to me. They okay. don't work. So this is what I tried with this. Now, I am thinking of soaking the wool balls in this. Oh. Why not? Okay. Right? Try it. Yeah. What, what could it hurt? Try it only on your clothes. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Their clothes are all nicer than mine. <laughs> that's what i mean you'll get in trouble if it is mess true. up <laughs> this is true what could be bad it's just vinegar i know right no. not anyway. all right so let's let's get you out of a funk I, i'm ready i'm all tired right. of feeling this blue oh, blah, blah. Oh, wait i want to talk about this so what is the difference to you between funk and motivation so i i kind of get stuck on the word motivation tell me what you mean by that I feel like motivation is a mirage. I feel like someone's like, just get motivated and go do it. No, I, if for me personally, that doesn't work. I need to say, uh, like I said, I'm cleaning the basement. And that was my plan since Wednesday. I said, Saturday, Sunday, we're cleaning the basement. So you don't think motivation exists? No, I don't think it's... Um, a reason to get up and do like, you don't, you don't you build up this motivation and go, you sort of have to fight against the urge to stay still. Do you know fight what I mean? Like against the urge to stay still. Like if you think about it in scientific terms, um, the body and, and at rest is like uses less energy. Right. Okay. So if you are, in a funk you're just going to stay where you are you're not going to be 
suddenly, oh, I'm going to go run five miles and I'm going to go no. eat a salad. Yes. This is, a, but I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that are like, I just am not motivated. I know, but I think that's what I'm saying. That's a mirage. It's like this little thing ha hanging in front of you, like, oh, here you go. This is what you should do. And you should be motivated to go do it. And your life will be all squared away if you just go get it all straight. And that's not the way it works for me. No, but why do we, why do, well, first of all, I like that you're saying this because I feel like most of us that are listening to this right now, blame it on motivation. And what you're mm -hmm. saying is like, we're blaming it on something that is not even real. Well, it, what do you, how do you define motivation? How do I define motivation? Yeah. I don't have a definition for it. Like if I was to think about motivation for exercise, my motivation is, yeah, I want to get uh, fit and I want to get muscles and I want to get definition, but is that enough of a reason for me to get up and go exercise? No. Okay. So motivation is a feeling. <laughs> Do we agree on that? Perhaps. Hmm. Okay. It's a feeling that I get sometimes a four in the morning when I wake up and I'm like, I'm going to be amazing today. I'm going to eat everything and do everything exactly how I should. So you're saying that's your little cheerleader voice. That's called motivation. I think that's what I'm saying. Okay. What do you, uh, I think sometimes people don't listen to the cheerleaders. <laughs> so no, because I, I don't think sometimes we have them. Yeah. Well, that's true too. Right. Yes. I don't think we have them. That's more probably what I'm trying to say here. That makes right? sense. Yeah. Does that make more sense? So I was thinking um, for me, what it looks like when I'm in a funk, even before I get motivated to go do something else is I'm just, if I'm in a funk, I'm worn out, I'm bored, stagnant, or just plain blah. Okay, wait, I'm writing these down because those were good. Worn out bored does that mean worn out in life or worn out with just worn out tired just tired okay bored bored with what you're eating, bored with everything everything it's just okay. the same old thing every day get up cook yep. clean work sleep <laughs> stagnant was yeah. this the third one uh just plain blah oh blah mm. So when I was thinking about this, if you are in a funk, you don't care about taking care of yourself. No, you don't. You don't. You're just going through the motions, right? Mm -hmm. You go to work, you come home, you do your whatever, you feed the dog, feed the kids, take care of your basics, and then watch TV and you go to bed. Mm -hmm. um, you eat whatever. And the easiest thing is fast food because you don't feel like cooking for sure. Right just want to heat something up or grab something and just eat. And then you don't sleep enough, which we know that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Doom scrolling, which you introduced us to mm -hmm. that definition. Your dishes pile up. You don't drink water. You don't take time to um, really sit down and eat a proper meal. Every, all of those things. Do you think that a lot of this comes from one single thing? that causes all of the other things? I think it's, when I was thinking of reasons why, like I went through a list for myself, like if you're at work and you're not valued and if you're in a relationship and you're not valued and if the weather is rainy and gloomy and you're like, there's no value here. And if you're worried all the time and you have nothing to offer, there is no value. So for me, the theme is- Value. Value. So when you don't feel like you have value, you start getting worn out and bored and blah, which you don't have to power to make a change. You don't have the power to really do something or impact. If I'm worried about all of my family members for various reasons, and I'm not able to take care of any of those situations, I'm powerless. I have no value in this situation, in this equation. So I just feel like, ah, I'm just existing. Mm. I don't mean to become really dark and no, but I'm, I'm just trying to, to figure out like anybody who's listening, like what, how do they get to the bottom of it? Mm -hmm. You know, 
Because real the reality is it is one thing that's causing all of the funk. It's for you, it's value. You don't feel like you have, you're bringing anything to the table of substance right. that is helpful. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you figure out what's causing your funk? Well, I think for me, knowing that I, if I can be proactive in something, I feel empowered and I feel productive and I feel purposeful. But if I cannot contribute anything to it, like the weather, it's been raining all day and it's been dark for three days. Mm -hmm. It, I can't do anything about the weather, mm -hmm. you know, or if I'm stuck in my job and I can't show people how worthy I am and how valuable I am and they keep dumping work on me, I, I feel powerless in that situation. Yeah. So it's just for me, the ability to take charge of my life. Ooh, that's hard. Yeah. Okay, so you're you are you currently still in a funk? Moderately. The cleaning helps me for sure because I'm doing something proactively. Okay, so it's not that you can you woke up and you can solve everybody's problems in your family. You just chose to do something that made you feel of value. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know the hardest part of this whole thing for me is if someone tells me what's wrong with you? Just snap out of it. Just go move on with your life. I That doesn't work for me. I hate that. I like, I'm feeling my feelings and maybe you don't want to hear it. And that's perfectly fine. I don't need to share it with you, but I'm still in my feelings. Don't shame me yeah. for having my feelings. Yeah. But can I do a flip side of this real quick? Yes, of I, course. I'm guilty of doing this to doing that to my, to like, uh, have this say somebody that I live with that I'm married to I <laughs> I'm very guilty of being like like kind of like I know I've used this analogy before like go if you like you drive to work the same way every day and you always mm -hmm. get rush hour traffic it's like well no crap you're gonna get this so stop right. complaining and just deal with it I feel right. like sometimes I get like that to some people but that's fair though but that's not helping that person's funk well if you, I think that's a slightly different scenario. If okay, you tell were, me why. So I can feel better about I, myself. <laughs> I do the same thing. So I'm trying to excuse it away. Okay, good. If, if a person runs into a wall and they're like, oh my God, where did this wall come from? You're like, the wall was always there. Right. Why are you surprised? I'm not saying that. I'm saying okay. if temporarily I'm in my feelings, okay? okay. And I'm sad or I'm depressed or just blah. Mm-hmm. I'm allowed to be there. Now, if it extends more than a short period of time, mm -hmm. then maybe I need some help. But I'm not talking about the extreme cases. I'm talking about right, right now, the weather's changing. It's getting darker. Life's happening all around me. I'm allowed to be a little blah. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. But I also feel like it's you've acknowledged what it is. And I mm -hmm. think that's key because I don't think some people acknowledge what it is. Yeah. I, I will tell you that I was in a funk probably all of October, probably the entire month of October, really probably half of September going into October. And I didn't know it. I don't think I, I didn't know I was in a funk. I thought I was doing yeah. everything that I should be doing. And I was just kind of like, I was weighing myself and I was okay. I was under my hate number. So I wasn't like worried about it. Um, I wasn't necessarily exercising, but I wasn't like eating crappy or terrible and then, and this is going to be a topic we're going to have to tackle is I got an injection in my foot and mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much pain I was in yeah. until I had no pain. And I'm like, oh my God, now I want to eat healthy. And now I want to go for a walk. And now I'm going to lift my weights. Like, yeah. And I didn't know, I truly didn't know I was not motivated. I didn't know I wasn't in a, I was in a funk until I felt that. Yeah. Constant pain is horrible. So I, it's just so fascinating to me. Like, but I think the key to this entire to topic is like, you got to know what's causing it. Right. Right. You have to know what's causing it or else you can't get past it. Right. I, I think that's absolutely right on. You can. So if I'm in my feelings, I'm like, I'm just sad, blue, whatever about whatever. I don't know. And then I sit down and think about it. I can tell you why, what's wrong with me. I can tell you exactly what's wrong with me. And in the 
in the process of saying it out loud to somebody who's patient and who's understanding, I'm going to be able to get over it because I process through it. Mm -hmm. If I'm not allowed to process through it, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still stuck. So true. Wow. Oh, gosh. So where, what did you find out about like how to get past it or what, where, you know, how to get out of it or what else did you find? Well, I found the generalist, which we always share for everything, basically. Yes, yeah, the same. Um, and then I did, I did do a deep dive on three of the pieces. Okay. But um, nurture yourself, which is what we were just talking about. Feel the feelings. Show yourself some self compassion. Don't shame yourself for having the feelings. Connect with others, which I think is the key for most people. Mm -hmm. You tend to self isolate, but really you need to be in touch with people, get moving, fuel your body, focus on good sleep, manage exposure to social media and news, self care, clean or rearrange surroundings, which is what I did. Which is Great. what, you know, it's interesting. My sister does this all the time. I swear she rearranges her furniture like every three weeks. Really? But maybe that's like her way of getting out of a funk. Yeah. Or just having some control over some piece of her life. Yeah. And then uh, create a playlist, take some time off of work, go outside, plan a trip, pamper yourself. Hmm. So that was like the general list. But I mean, that overlaps with so many of the things that we talk about. Right. Wow. So you had something about goals. What were you talking about? Can you explain? So I was looking into this topic about like, you're in that funk. It's like, all right, how do I get out of this funk? And a lot of what I was finding was like, we don't have our goals set for good enough. Okay. Like we just simply are like, oh, I want to feel better. I want to lose weight, but that's not a really good goal. Like our mm -hmm. goals need to be more um, like clear. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like we need to have more clear goals. Like my goal for the end of, till the end of this year, if I say I want to lose weight, that's not really a clear goal. You know what I mean? That's kind of like right. I'm fantasizing about it. I'm going to fantasize about it. And there was a study where they had people that actually set their goals down. I think they called them mentally, um, mentally contrasting goals versus mentally fantasizing goals. And the, oh. people, the half, the group that fantasized about their goals versus like wrote it down and had a plan. Um, the ones that had the plan ate less calories and exercised more. So really what it is, is like, I'm very guilty of just fantasizing about my goal. Mm -hmm. I'm really good at that. You're not alone. I'm really good at telling you guys, like, I'm going to lose five pounds between now and the end of the year. Yeah. I'm really good at that fantasy but I don't have anything else in between that. Yeah. And I don't want to, let me be clear. <laughs> I don't want to have a plan. I want to fantasize, but I'm realizing that that's not helping me. Right. I think that's so honest and so right on the money. I, how many times I'm like, I wish I could just be the way I was in college. Yeah. yeah that's not going to happen without a plan. And I do this. I, I mean, I, I'm constantly like, okay, well, I, I, I think I actually counted and there was like 53, I don't know, 53 days, let's just say till the end of the year when I was looking at it. And I'm like, I could do five pounds between now and the end of the year. And that was the end of my fantasy. Like I didn't go, okay, I'm going to eat this for breakfast, right. and this for lunch, and then this for dinner, or, okay, I'm going to exercise or, okay, there's like, I just said, I could do that. There right. Was, that was it. Right. Right. And then guess what? In two weeks, I'm going to be in a funk because I didn't get lose five pounds or whatever. It yeah. Is. And then you're disappointed in yourself. Yeah. And then you get back it's to the. Terrible. Yeah. Yes. So silly. No, I think it makes sense. Um, So I was wondering, like, what happens to your brain when you're in a funk? You know, similar to what you're talking about, like you just get back there and you get back to the place of being despondent and and just like sad. Your amygdala which controls your emotions as part of your brain, it becomes enlarged and more active during depression, which can lead, lead to mood swings and sleep issues. So if you are sad or depressed, uh, your brain, the amygdala gets enlarged, which leads to feeling bad and then eating bad, which leads to feeling bad. You see, there's like a loop. 
so like let's just give me an uh, so i have a visual like your amygdala let's say is the side i'm just this is no science at all like let's say it's like a golf ball but when you get sad and depressed it maybe starts getting to be like a line and then mm-hmm. you still we are more sad and depressed and then it's like a lemon and it, it, you can it can get bigger and bigger because you're just kind of like not getting out of it right because you're not uh doing the things that would help to decrease that amygdala There's a second piece, there's multiple pieces, but the second piece, which I found really interesting is there's a protein called hypoxia inducible factor one, HIF one. So in the, when the brain isn't getting enough oxygen, this protein is produced and it can be associated with depression like behaviors. So when you're in a funk, I think people should notice how they're breathing. If they're not breathing deeply they're probably not getting enough oxygen, which can lead to depression, depression-like symptoms. Stop, because this sounds super easy. This right. sounds almost too easy. Right. Like, okay, you're in a funk. Well, am I breathing properly? Probably not. It's probably short, shallow breaths. Your shoulders are probably up to your ears and you're probably having short, shallow breaths. Every time someone talks about breathing, I immediately sit up straighter (laughs) immediately. So that's pretty cool though. Yeah, I thought it was. And I'm sure it's much more complicated than I'm even making it. But I thought, you know, it's a systemic problem. It's not just your um, feeling. And when you, there was something I wanted to tell you about. Um, It's related to the gut brain. Oh, here. Okay. Here's what I wanted to talk about. So when I was researching that list, um, three things stood out to me, which was um, food, movement, and um, social media. Okay. I said, let me look and see what is, what's the big deal about this? Why does it really make a difference? Okay. Food influences your brain chemistry through the gut brain axis, where the bacteria in your gut communicate with your brain and it affects mood regulation, energy levels, and cognitive function. And a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and healthy fats can positively impact mental health, while a diet high in processed foods, sugar, and unhealthy fats can contribute to mood swings, depression, and anxiety symptoms. Mm. That's a vicious cycle, though. Yes. Because once you're eating crap and processed foods and junk and you feel terrible, that's all you want to do. Yep. And it's really hard to get out. I mean, that is a really, that's a hard, I think there was a podcast you and I had listened to or talked about a long time ago about how you can cure a lot of your depression issues by eating, cleaning up your diet. Yes. This just is reiterating that, but that's hard to do. It is because you're like, what's the point? It's not worth it, but really it is worth it because it can make you feel better. Does that? When you're eating health, or let me put it this way, when you eat like crap, does that enlarge your amygdala? I don't know the science behind that, possibly, because if your gut brain access is, if your gut is full of bad bacteria, and then it tells your brain, look, we have an overload, it might send information to the wrong parts of your brain. So, Hmm. you know, like it can cause a disruption in a big way. And these are ways we can change things without medication. I'm not saying don't use medication. You might need it. Absolutely. But there are lifestyle changes that you can make to help mm-hmm. yourself. Yep. That's what I wish so many people would hear you say. Yeah. Cause I know a lot of people who are depressed or in a funk and it's like, do you not understand that what you're eating is contributing to that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The second thing that I did a deep dive on is a Harvard study found that increasing physical activity can reduce the risk of depression by 26%. So that's exercise? Yes. Ugh. Movement, physical activity. Another study found that exercise can treat mild to moderate depression as effectively as antidepressant medications. Really? Exercise can increase the production of endorphins, improve sleep, reduce stress and anxiety, and enhance self-esteem and social support. I mean, we all know it's good for you, not even for weight loss. It's good for your mental health. Yeah. That's why I exercise. I don't exercise. Yes, I want to be fit, but 
a lot of people I know that exercise for that reason alone. And I, I, I need to get that to that point. A single dose of exercise can improve a person's ability to perform prefrontal cortex and attention tasks following the exercise. So if you exercise, your brain's sharper right after for like a couple of hours. You can do a lot of stuff after you exercise. Hmm. So well, that that's a perfect reason on why you, you should not exercise before bed then. Yes, because they, they've, they've always said that. Like they, yeah. I've always heard that don't exercise before bed. Right. Well, Hmm. You're amped up. Yeah. All right. So what was the third one? The third one was social media. So this is a time and age that we live in that social media connects us to people. It gives us information. I get so many recipes from social media. I get ideas for meals or for Thanksgiving and whatever. But social media can increase just the anxiety And it can be addictive because it activates the brain's reward center, releasing dopamine. So it makes you feel good temporarily. And then social media can also make it hard to tell what's real and what's not. Mm. Isn't that crazy? It's really crazy because I can't tell you the arguments my family and I have daily fun arguments. I'm like, that isn't real. That's social media. And then they will say it to me. And then I say it to them. And then we go back and forth. Like, yes. I was yes. just watching um this stupid, I'm looking up holiday gifts to get people like, uh-huh. and I went on and I was like trying to find um the best gifts to get teen boys or whatever. And I was watching the guy and he was giving the ideas. You guys, I really thought they were real. And my daughter's like, you know, that's a joke, <laughs> right? I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, she's like, mom, that, that's it. He's he, he, every single thing he listed was sarcastic. I'm like, well, David would like all of those things. <laughs> But like, that's a perfect example. Like I, sometimes I can't tell the difference. Sure. Well, and that makes you feel stupid, which just makes the whole thing worse. <laughs> yeah. Because if you're like, wait, I thought that was real. I did. It's not? Yeah. It's, uh, and I also was reading that TikTok can shorten your attention span. Oh, yes. So in five seconds, if you haven't gotten me hooked, I'm done. I'm, um, I, I'm so guilty of that when I'm watching these videos, mm-hmm. they all give like a little intro and I'm like, I don't want to hear your intro. I want to hear your ideas. And I like, yeah, it's too much it. talking. Let's go. I don't want you to talk to me. My daughter told me something very interesting. Um, she said that music is now one minute shorter, all songs. No. Than it used to be. Mm-hmm. She's wow. like, when you listen to the average song, meaning me, and I'm not that old. But she said, when you listen to music, mom, songs were about three minutes and 30 seconds. And now they're only about two minutes and 30 seconds. No way. A full minute. Most songs have sh- small shrunken down to. That's crazy. I know. Because you're right. Our attention spans are gone. They're just gone. Wow. So I, this is a interesting twist on this, but I, I know. Think th- I don't even know how we got there. I don't know. <laughs> but for me, I think the key is this, is I need to be creative. I need to be proactive. I need to do things that are doable for me. And cutting up the vegetables was not doable. It mm-hmm. seems then I'm disappointed and I don't want to perpetuate the cycle. So I have to do things. I know this seems counterintuitive. Like it's much harder to clean than it is to cut vegetables, but that's mm-hmm. easier for me. <laughs> it's easier to clean. That's really interesting that maybe needs to be dug into a little bit more. No, no, no. I think you like the way you feel yeah. after you clean. Oh, or yeah. You like the way you feel after you eat some celery. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what that's about. Because it was to me, it's so much harder to clean. Well, and I wasn't on my phone for three hours yesterday and for a few hours today. You know, could that feel? It so just you feel felt, better. I feel yeah. amazing. I had a break from all of it. It was amazing. Hmm. I wonder if that maybe has something to do with it too for me, that mm-hmm. I'm not starting my day that way and I feel more motivated. Oh. And it is because of the pain as well, but I'm wondering if that is another little. Yes. That very well could be. Yes. Because I'm not starting my day off that way. I'm just, you know. Yep. Hmm. I'm not doom scrolling. I'm just yes. going. Wow. Interesting. Oh, so for me, I think that this topic of like getting in that funk 
is really about asking my questions. Like, why am I in a funk right now? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Like really getting to the bottom of it before I can figure out how to get out of it. Right. Absolutely. And I don't do that. I don't typically do that. I just always, I'm like, God, I don't, why do I, why do I not want to eat good? Do you know what I mean? And I need to push my buttons a little bit more and go, yeah, why don't you? Call me. I'll ask you the question. I love when people <laughs> ask me the question. I actually love watching people figure theirs out. Mm -hmm. I would love to just do a whole, like maybe a whole zoom with 20 people on. And we just ask them why they're in a funk. Yes. yes. I, I just also, cause I'm nosy and I would love to get to the bottom of everybody's well, because I also think it's helpful. Like for, yes. for me to hear that yours is about value. I'm like, Hmm, maybe that's part of mine. Yes. Or I, I might had find that out down. that somebody else's might be because somebody that they love is sick. Like that's, I could be like, Oh, maybe that's why I'm in a funk. Like, I think it's also helpful to hear why people are in a funk. I think you're right on the nose. It's helpful to hear that other people are going through similar things. Mm -hmm. And it's validating that other people are in a similar place to you because then you're not alone and you're mm -hmm. not isolated. And it's just validating. I think or you you're go, right. Why am I? Why? What is wrong with me that I don't care about what I'm eating? And then I could hear you say that and somebody else say something. And I'm like, oh, I have both of that. No wonder yeah. why I'm not. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yes, it's fa it's fascinating to me to hear. I think you're right, hundred percent. Maybe we should do a, a a one time. Do you want to figure out why you're in a funk? We will ask you why. We will get to the bottom. <laughs> it might be you fun. Will, we can ask questions like nobody's business. So. Oh, I'm so good at it. Yeah, you are. We have a game and everything about it in this house. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's really fun. But anyway, mm -hmm. so do you have a call to action this week? I do. Okay. You and I'm hoping about that it. I, you well, don't look no, happy at all. No, about it. It's not that I've had two weeks of not doing my call to action. So I don't want to pick something oh. that's going to be like out of reach, but I really want to try to do this because I think okay. it's going to help my mental health. I want to start limiting my time on my phone. And what okay. I mean is if I'm, 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 I'm really embarrassed to admit this. If I'm sitting watching TV, I have my phone open and my iPad open and I'm mm -hmm. playing on both of them or reading or doing and the TV is on. Mm -hmm. If I'm somewhere, if I'm driving with my husband in the car, my phone is open. If it's I'm, I want to limit that time. Like if I'm doing something else, if I'm watching TV, I want to shut my phone down. If I'm with my husband, we're talking, I don't want to be on my phone. That's very, obviously it's very rude and disrespectful. I want to limit urge to just pick up the phone and check it you know mm. all the time i just want to put it away okay so hopefully i can get it done how about you that is really a hard one by the way yeah so guilty of it so guilty oh um i'm actually trying very very hard to work on my gluten and not have as much of it okay. um, i would like to say going completely gluten-free but i don't i'm gonna just say right now as much as i can Mm -hmm. until I figure things out. Like I'm, for some reason, I went to go buy gluten-free oatmeal and it's sold out everywhere, like two oh. stores, but not everywhere, but you know what I mean? Like, so mm -hmm. little things like that, it's like frustrating. Um, I haven't found a bread I like, so I'm working towards it, Yeah, uh, but I'm, I really want to try. I know, I know this isn't beneficial, but it's better than what I'm at. I want to try five days to be completely gluten-free mm -hmm. this week. I think the giving up anything like this, whether it's sugar or dairy mm -hmm. or gluten or any of those things, I think the the really important piece of that where you are is the exploratory phase. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out what are alternatives for you, what are options for you, and that's such a critical piece of this process. Mm -hmm. It would just be so easy for me to say, give up gluten to all together. There's no, but that's not right. helpful. I can't, I'll fail if I do right. that. Right, right. So I also went and bought I like I really like this quinoa brown rice mix from all these it's delicious they were sold out of it like everything that I had on my list today to yeah. be successful I was like okay so that's not gonna work that's not gonna work do you know what I mean right. so it was like so I tweaked it a little bit and I'm just gonna be try and really do five days out of seven okay okay I, I know that's, that's technically not healing your gut because isn't it no but that's not what you're in the that's not where I'm now. at yet right, right you're exploring right 
Right. And for the record, um, I'm telling you all why I'm doing this is because I have no pain and I really want to keep it that way. Yeah. Um, I'm just really trying to prevent it. So I'm wondering if that will be helpful. I think it's fantastic that you're trying all these different things. Yeah. So good luck to you this week. Willing to try it. It's not going to hurt. No, so. not at all. Yeah. But anyway, all right. Well, we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.